Hi, I'm Matt with Schematical, and today we're talking about Lambda services. More specifically, how to use the Terraform scripts I've written, or feel free to write your own, to magically spin up infrastructure as code style Lambda services, complete with the security groups, IAM roles, all the fun stuff there. You might say, why a Lambda versus, let's just say, an ECS container? So that's Docker running on Amazon. Uh, the reason is, uh, if you have Docker running on Amazon, it's an always-on system. And that might be good if you've got an established product that people want and you have predictable load. But let's just say you don't have predictable load. For example, with drawnby.ai, people are using it sparingly. Sometimes there's sprints of people on it, sometimes there's not. And so with Lambdas, I pay only for every invocation. That means every time someone visits the site or uses it. So that usage goes up, uh, then I'm paying more, and it goes down, then I'm paying less. And if that usage gets above where an always-on system like ECS is running, then I'd consider switching to the ECS and using serverless, which hopefully I'll do another video on, the serverless framework, uh, that's pretty easy to do. And you can do it with other things. I'm going to save you guys a ton of time. And uh, if you just got to start up and, you know, tech startup, or you're trying to boot up a microservice really fast, Lambdas are phenomenal. Uh, if it's always going to be on, needs to be on 24-7 and already warm and booted up, you might want to go more the ECS Kubernetes style route. And again, don't just boot up an EC2 instance and pray. It's not how this works. So let's get into the scripts. So Lambdas can do all types of things. This one's hooked up to the API gateway. It takes in a Westful, a Westful a RESTful web request and then handles it and responds with JSON, basically. I have other ones that are Kinesis workers that listen to events. You can hook them up to all sorts of queues. Uh, you can hook them up to listen for S3 changes. So if something, a binary object gets uploaded, there's a million things you can do with these things. Very handy. Uh, the same scripts that I'm using to boot up this Kinesis worker are the same ones that I use to boot up this public facing API right here. You've never played around. If you've never played around with them, they're really nice. I'm pretty sure it's just a Docker wrapper that automatically wraps it with its own code there. I only know this because once I managed to get PHP to run on the Lambda and I'm not recommending that. That was just a science experiment gone horribly wrong. <laughs> Let's get into the actual code here. And by the way, if you haven't seen my other videos, uh, go ahead and check them out there. This is part of a series of things that I give away on the site. So if you go to schematical.com and you go to free resources, you can see my Lambda service here. And this Lambda service, basically, let's start with the variables it takes in as a service prefix. So you can call it, I might actually get rid of that eventually, but I prefix things with schematical consulting a lot of times. Second thing you got is the service name here. So in this case, uh, it's Chaos Pixel, which is the back end for Drawn by AI. Then the environment, dev, staging, prod, etc. The region, and uh, then you're going to pass in your VPC ID. Now, if you're not familiar with that, go check out my video on VPCs, which is here, and check out the VPC script that actually boots this up. And then your private subnet mappings come from the VPC. And additionally, you can put in any layers you need. Now, layers are pre-compiled dependencies that you might need. Um, I'll save that for another video. If you don't know what they are, uh, only you, research it if you end up with a Lambda that's too big for some reason or another. Use S3 source. Basically, it allows you to use S3 as the source. Uh, I don't use that by default, but you could specify S3. We use the serverless framework, so we pretty much pass it the first time an empty Lambda, and then after the code pipeline builds and runs, then it goes ahead and deploys it. Uh, also, I have scripts on code pipeline and CI CD. So if you need help setting that up, uh, these are programmed actually to build this. So they all work together. And if by chance you need additional help, uh, join my Discord community. We talk about this stuff on there. Uh, I also have group coaching and I consult on this. So if you're a larger company looking to use some of this technology, I'd happily chat with you. I say larger company. I, I consult with a lot of startups. So uh, all shapes and sizes. We'll, we'll figure out a way to help you. Don't worry. Back to the S3 bucket. There's the S3 key. The handler, uh, which is your handler function. So uh, your handler function is the name of the JavaScript function or Python function, if you were inclined to do that. And I've got no problem with Python. It's just I don't have scripts. Uh, I don't have anything open sourced with Python in it for this. Uh, but that uh, would be the name of the function in here. Uh, check out serverless JS docs for a little more detail uh, if you're going to use that framework. And you can pass in environment variables 
that it might use, and you can set the memory size. So its default's pretty small, but you can go pretty big with it too. Now here's where the real magic happens, is that in order to run on AWS, you wanna make sure you have organized IAM roles, and those, for those of you guys that might forget, are how AWS allows your Lambda to interact with other AWS services like S3, Kinesis, you know, does it need to publish events at Kinesis? Does it need to just have access to overwrite these S3 objects? So that's your IAM role. This does a lot of that for you. And at the end, it'll output it and you can add additional services that you might need to talk to and whitelist them that way. But it's really nice because it's all uniform, clearly named, makes it really easy to manage. Uh, same thing, it attaches the policy. And then it does the security group. So if it's going to function inside your VPC, which is your virtual private cloud, your private network, where hackers and evil malicious people can't actively talk to it, it's going to need an identity. So basically it can be firewalled and we the security group tells it what ports it can access and talk to different things on. So that's the egress rules right there. So it can talk to anything, but nothing can talk to it, which is fine because it's actually invoked. It's actually not taking network traffic in. It gets executed with a very specific set of arguments that represent, you know, either the Kinesis event that fired or the RESTful API gateway uh, call made to it. And here is the initial zip file that we are going to boot up with. It's pretty much an empty zip that just says, hello world. Uh, here I define it there and it's in the build folder. So if we go back to the build folder here, you can see it is an empty hello world. And this just zips that up and puts it in a place that can be easily referenced. Over here, we actually define the Lambda function itself. You know, go ahead and use the file name, function name, the role we defined above the handler. Uh, source code hash is nice to make sure you've got the right source code in there. Layers, if you're going to use layers, this should actually be dynamic. I need to set that as a variable. Uh, feel free to pull request or bug me if I don't. Uh, memory size there. And it'll take the VPC configuration from the lamp, the VPC Terraform module and use that. Additionally, you can pass in raw ones if you want to. If you've got an existing one, I would just import your VPC into the module if it was me, but you guys do you. And I've got tracing mode set to active. I probably should make that a variable as well. So it's pretty simple. Notice I don't have the API gateway in here at all. Um, that is because I have another module that I can use to attach uh, the API gateway to those lambdas or to whatever I like. So, uh, but I will save that API gateway environment for another video. Now let's look at the outputs. Here's the Lambda function, like I said, here's the IAM role, and I probably should output the security group. A few moments later. Refresh, wow, look at that. The magic of editing, uh, that magically appeared in there. So yes, we're exporting the Lambda security group ID, so you can use that and reference it in other places and assign and whitelist that security group so it can access, let's just say, your Elastic Hash or other data sources. So let's take a look at it in action here. For Chaos Pixel, here is the template for what an environment might look like here. We've got our Kinesis streams. And let's just go ahead and get right to the Lambda. So here we're defining a Lambda service, okay? This service is actually the GQL services Lambda. Here you can see I named it uh, just the service name, which is SCKS pixel V1 dash GQL. You can't see it over there. GQL, there's the region, the environment, the VPC that we booted up at the root. And you guys can look at this stuff. It's currently open source and online. I don't know if it always will be, but I'm gonna try and always have a template project in there. But this is the source code for the back end of Chaos Pixel or the back end of drawnby.ai. Uh, which if you're not familiar with, check out www.drawnby.ai. It does uh, AI uh, stable diffusion pictures of your pet. And it's one of my projects. Here we define the memory size. It's a little bit bigger, 512. And we pass in a whole bunch of environment variables that are obscured. because You're not stealing my Stripe API key, darn it. Um, and then down here, there's a build pipeline that actually builds that specific Lambda. Additionally, here you can see that we are attaching a policy to it. So right here, we've got the module that we've got, the Lambda service IAM role name, and we're attaching it to another IAM policy that I defined just above there. So you can, outside of the module, attach different policies for the specific ones. Then below that, you can see I've got another Kinesis worker here. 
that functions very differently. Uh, this specifically, this kinesis worker just consumes events from a queue and then does event-driven architecture there. By the way, if you don't know what event-driven architecture is, ping me. I need to do a video on it. I'd love to just nerd out with you over it. So back to this, you can see we're referencing the module service. I'm going to extract this to its own one eventually, but this will have to do for now. And uh, you can see uh, we've got all the same VPC stuff. The handler is a little bit different. So we've got a Kinesis worker handler, so it's not the same as the other one. Uh, and then we pass it most of the same variables there, so we can do a lot of back-end work there. And... Here, we're defining a event source mapping. So this takes the Kinesis stream from above and triggers the Lambda every single time it runs. I will say to save money, you can actually define a filter that says only use this type of event, et cetera, that limits your executions. Right now, the drawn by project and the cast pixel project are so small, I'm not bothering with that yet. That is how it works in action in real life here. So I went through a lot of stuff really fast, as I tend to do. Uh, feel free to hop on the Discord and ask me questions or leave a comment. I do my best to respond. I've been YouTubing since 2012, despite the fact I have a very small following, but dedicated. Thank you, guys. And feel free to uh, reach out if you need help. Uh, schematical.com is my primary website. If you've got any questions on this, schematical.com slash free is where you can find these scripts. Also, they'll be in the show notes. So without further ado, thank you so much. If you have any questions or anything else you want me to script up in Terraform for your, you know, create modules that you might be able to reuse, go ahead and leave a comment. I'd love to help you out. Other than that, I'm Matt with Schematical, and I'll see you next time. Did I just one take a video? No, 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 no. I don't do two takes. But this guy was amateurs like you do two takes. I do one take. Print it, I'll be in my three-story trailer.